Hi Bag Builders, it's Diane from Spencer Rog Sewing Patterns. Uh, slightly different video today to what you're used to. Um, the world's a bit of an uncertain place at the moment and anything we can do to show the love is really going to help. Yeah, I'm sat here with notes. I haven't learned anything because I'm just trying to get it out as quickly as possible. So um, I was thinking as a bag designer, what can I do to help? Can I do anything to help? Obviously, I can make a pattern to give you a distraction as sewers, something to do to fill your time. But then I thought, well, is there something that would also help others that we could do that uh, we could share and it would really show that we care? So I've come up with the doorstep care pod. This pattern and tutorial are completely free, but you can perhaps make a difference by helping somebody in your neighbourhood. Yeah, just a random act of kindness. It's something you can make from just what you have in your fabric stash quickly to give to a friend or neighbour who may be struggling or in isolation. Fill it with a box of tissues, a loaf of bread, nappies or a prescription you've collected for somebody, even a casserole, and leave it on the doorstep to share the love and show your care. Or fill one for an overstretched health worker to show we appreciate them. I've developed the bag so there's no hardware or interfacing whatsoever and you can use anything at all to make it up in. But if you do have a stiff or firm fabric in your stash, the bag will virtually stand up on its own too. There's the option to add weatherproof resistant flaps to the top for if you're leaving it outdoors on a doorstep for a while. I know it's not completely waterproof, but it's going to aid if there's a shower of rain or to keep the contents protected. I've developed it with integral handles and a really easy box bottom that lines up every time and it has a large square bottom to help the bag stand and give it lots of room inside, even for a dish at the bottom. So put a tag on it to show you care. I'll add that to the blog too if you want to download it. There's no sign ups for anything. It's completely free. Just follow the link in the text below to get to my blog. I'll give you the measurements for the finished bag here. They're 13 inches by 12 inches, but you can easily scale it up or scale it down. You can make the bottom bigger, wider, make the bag shorter, really easy to do. So what are we waiting for? Let's go sew guys. Now you really can use any type of fabric you've got for this, but anything you have in your stash that's ideally firm or relatively stiff fabric. Um, I'm going to be using Cordura today. You can hear it rustle a little bit. Um, this is a 225 gram Cordura. I'm using it because it's really economical. Um, you can use any weight. This is 225 as I say, but you can get much heavier weights as well, which would also be good. It's a really good fabric for this project because it doesn't fray. So I don't have to neaten any edges and I can leave some raw. Um, but again, you can neaten them and you can use any fabric at all, as I say. So heavier Cordura, canvas, coated fabrics. I've got an old deck chair fabric here. Uh, that's brilliant. Waterproof canvas, any coated fabrics, water resistant fabrics work really well because of what are we going to be doing with it. Uh, twill, cork, even home deck weights, curtains, old curtains you've got. So just raid your stash for something that's a little bit firm. So here are the cutting measurements for your bag. Not many pieces involved in this at all. We have one long strip of fabric, which is 31 inches by 14 inches, and that forms the main body of the bag. We then have two pieces for the handle facing, and they are 14 inches by four inches. And then if you want to add the weatherproof flaps, all I did was I cut a circle of 11 inches and I cut that in half, so it's 11 inches across the diameter there, and cut it in half. If you are using a fabric that frays, you can cut out four semicircles and place two right sides together, hem them around the curve, and then just turn them through the center, and that will stop them fraying. That, that edge will be hidden once we make the bag up. Um, the seam allowance is one centimeter, or three eighths of an inch, all the way through, unless otherwise stated. And before you start, if you are using a fraying fabric, just on that one long piece, you can go ahead and just neaten with a zigzag stitch along those two edges. So I will add the text below the video for all those pieces, and I'll also add it to my blog, and there'll be a couple of templates on there too. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn a hem on the bottom of each of my two facing pieces. So that's a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch hem with wrong sides together, just on the bottom. And then I'm gonna add 
if you want to, I'm going to add my weatherproof flaps. So you don't, these don't need to be on the bag. This is literally, if you're going to be leaving it on a doorstep somewhere, and it just needs a little bit of weatherproofing. It's not going to keep it completely waterproof, but it'll certainly help with a bit of, a bit of a shower and it'll keep the flies off. So fold each in half just to find the center point. So I'll do that on the first facing. Just literally so I can see where the center point is. And I'll do the same with my first weatherproof flap. And then I'm going to lay that right side down on top of the folded hem. So your facing is wrong side up with the hem at the bottom and your flap is right side down. And all I'm going to do is match the center points at the top of the hem. So that's going to be lying along the hem itself so I'm able to stitch it on. So I'll just pin that in place for the time being. Actually, pins aren't a great idea for Cordura because um, they can leave holes depending on the backing. You can see this one's got kind of a water resistant backing. I'm gonna use them here because it's difficult to see and obviously I'm gonna be stitching over it, but just watch what fabric you are using. So I'm gonna take that to the machine and I'm gonna stitch across just to hold that in place. So you can either stitch it from this side so you can see where everything is, or you can stitch it from that side so you can make sure that you're keeping a lovely distance from the edge but i'm just going to stitch it from this side it's, it's much easier to see so we're stitching across here regardless of whether you've added the flap or not we're going to be securing that hem so to the machine i'm just using a regular 14s needle in here with the cordura and i'm going to put my stitch length to about 2.6 2.8 just with a regular straight stitch and there we go that secures the hem in place and the flap on if you're adding it so repeat that with the other side So next we want to draw the position of our handle holes. So let's make a fold so we can find the central point of our facing. So just fold it in half so we can find that central line. I've drawn it in pen on there, I don't know if you can see it. So that's the back and then we want to mark on there one and a half inches down from the top a hole that is 4.5 inches by one inch. So you can either draw that straight on by hand or I've actually produced a little template if you want to download that from the blog. Again, just fold that in half so your hole is um, in half itself and then lay that on top. So 1.5 inches down from the top, which is lined up against the top edge. Hold it in place and I'm just gonna draw around that. Yes, I am using a biro, don't do it in uh, in real life this is only virtual just so you can see it i don't know how well you'll be able to see it so there we go there is my handle hole on my facing and then i'm going to grab my outer body piece move some of these things I'm going to lay that face down sorry face up so with the right side there and lay my face in right side down on the top of one short edge so that should match up exactly and I'm going to clip that in place I've left my clips over the other side of the room so I'll just pin it for a second till I get them And we're now going to stitch around that handle hole. So you want to stay exactly along the lines. You don't want to cross over 
Um, we want to make it as accurate as possible because that we're going to turn through and that will be the exact hole that you're going to see for the handle. So we need to match up both sides exactly and keep our sit stitching as straight as possible. So I'll just go ahead and stitch that. You can help it around the curve just by doing one stitch at a time. Keep your stitch length quite small. that for the other side. So there we have our beautiful handle holes ready for cutting out. Remove those clips, clear the decks, and time to be brave. I'm just going to take my handle hole and make a snip in the middle of it just so I can literally get my scissors in. You see that? And I'm going to snip close to the seam all the way around there on the inside of that hole. So about three millimetres from the edge, all the way around. So there we go, I've cut through all layers of fabric, both layers of fabric, so that's facing and outer. And I'm just about three mil away from the seam, all the way around. So we're now gonna snip into all corners so we're going to clip all those curves so that when we turn it through we won't get any puckering so I'm going to snip right down to the stitch line I'll move in here so you can see it so right down to the stitch line I'll show you a close-up in a second you don't need to do it on the straight parts just on the curves themselves So here we go, we can see I've snipped all the way around those curves so it will be able to turn through nice and smoothly. So I'm now going to head to the ironing board and I'm going to press a one centimetre seam allowance on the top of both of those layers. So I've pressed a seam allowance to both top edges there, the facing and the outer. Can you see? A one centimetre, three eighths of an inch seam allowance, just hem allowance just turned over there. When you press in, just be careful if you've got a coated fabric like I have here. Um, try and avoid touching it with the iron. It hasn't mattered too much on this, but it depends on the coating. It's fine on the outside. So line up those edges, make sure they're nice and neatly aligned. And the next thing we're going to pull our handle through, or the facing through the hole. Um, just as an aside here, when you put that um, little flap on, if you are using a really heavyweight fabric, you can put that on after you've turned the uh, handle through the facing, or the facing through the hole of the handle. Oh, that's confusing, isn't it? Right, okay, so let's push that through. And this will form our beautiful handle hole. on the back so you can see once that's through you can see our handle being formed there you can see that and the facing is on the reverse there 
So let's head back to the ironing board and press that flat. If you do have any puckers in it, I'm going to iron this now and they'll probably disappear. Um, but if you do have any puckers, just go back in and snip even closer in to the stitch line. It's probably because you haven't snipped close enough. So let me press that and let's see what it looks like. Yes, that's absolutely beautiful. Folded in nicely. As I say, you can go back in and snip closer. The edges are just folded in inside. So let's do the same with the other side. Snip my hole, clip into the corners and then press. Snipped. So I'll go and turn the hems on that. And I'll go press that again. So we have our splendiferous handle holes on both sides of the bag now. That's great. So we're now going to create the box bottom on this bag and we're going to do it in a slightly simpler method. Um, it'll ensure that you never get any wonky corners and they always line up perfectly. So first of all, fold the bag in half across the width. Just line up those top edges where they're folded in. Just clip those in place at the moment just so we can notch the bottom. So you've got an exact half on the bottom. I'm just literally going to clip those in place just for a second. And then we're going to measure up on each side two and three quarter inches. And I'm going to make a mark. So just clip it there so you can see it. So two and a quarter sorry two and three quarter inches up is there and I'm actually going to snip that I'm going to make a notch so I can see it easily I'm going to do the same on the other side it's worth clipping everything in place so you know nothing gets knocked out as you're snipping and moving around so 2.75 inches notch that side as well And then what I'm going to do is take those clips off and turn the first side down just to those notches. Clip that in place. So you can see we just have a, a fold there and that's a 2.75 inch fold. And then we're going to turn it over and fold the other side back in exactly the same way. So fold it at those points where you've got your 2.75 just so it's lying on top of the other. Take a bit of time to do it. Obviously, I'm just doing it very quickly here just to show you. But again, make sure that's on your 2.75 fold. Flip it in place. You can see all your top edges can still line up, but you've got that fold in there of 2.75 in inches each side. Now, obviously, you can make that bigger or smaller depending on what size you want your bag to finish at. Um, I'll show you an example. I'll show you two pictures here. This one has the pink one has a 2.75 inch fold, and the green one has a three inch fold. So you can see that. It makes the bag slightly shorter, but it makes the box bottom bigger if you make a bigger fold in the bottom. So I'm using 2.75 inches on this one. So we're now ready to stitch those side seams. So I'll just clip them in place. Lift your Facings out of the way, just clip them out of the way for now because we're not going to stitch through those. We're just literally stitching the side seams. Clip the top, 
and as you're stitching just open up those folds at the top again we don't want to stitch those down that's just to help us with the top edge later to make it nice and and straight and even so let's stitch up both side seams i find it easier to stitch from the top so you know you're matching up your edges it's your one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way stitch our second side obviously back tack at the beginning and at the end just flip it over so I can start at the top of the bag again just to make sure it's lined up properly now we want to join the side seams of the facings so just take those clips off that you had holding the facings out of the way. I'm going to lift those up. So we're going to join those separately to the bag. So the facing needs to be placed right side together with the other facing, but you're holding it well away from the bag itself. So we'll just be seaming the facings and nothing else. So I'm going to clip those right sides together at the short edges. You see it's separate to the bag kept out of the way and I'm going to stitch a seam across the end at one centimetre or three eighths of an inch. So that's the first one. I'm now going to do the same with the other. So lift that facing up so it's right sides together out of the way of the bag. Line up your short edges. Make sure your seam allowance and your top edge are lining up and seam across there again. And now we're ready to turn the bag through. Give it a shake, tuck the facings inside. Have a look at the top edge, you've got your hems turned over at the top, so just tidy that top edge up first. Your facings should sit nicely inside there. And then push the bottom down and you'll see you've got your folded edges here to make your box bottom. And there on the outside is a little feature. Tidy that up, we can press that afterwards, but you can see now how the bag has been formed. So we're just about finished here. We're just going to tidy up this top edge and finish it off. So you see you've got your two edges with the hems turned under ready for you. So I'm just going to clip those top edges together. So matching where your seams are turned in. Just match them at the top of each side of the handle. And then at the side seams, push those seam allowances inwards. You can trim them down a little bit if you're using a thicker fabric. You can either push them to one side or you can open up the seam allowances. I'll just push them to one to one side and one to the other just to nest the seams. Or nest the seam allowances in this one because it's not very thick fabric. And match those seam allowances. Another clip. Same on the other side. Trim if you want to. Fold seam allowances in. You can tidy it up, you can see mine don't exactly match. Quite a couple of millimetres out, but it doesn't matter, you've got time to tidy it up here and nobody will ever know. Push your seam allowances to different sides or open them and clip again at that side. So can you see how that's working now? So I'll just stand that up and I'll work my way around the bag clipping as I go and making sure everything is tucked inside.
So we're all clipped all the way around. And now we're ready to take that to the machine and I'm going to top stitch all the way around that top edge so it catches in top edge of the lining, uh, sorry, the facing and the outer and it closes the bag completely. I am going to take the footbed off my machine because it's easier if you've got a smaller bag to get around the top, but you don't need to. So again, just carrying on with my regular stitch length. I'm going to use um, about three millimetres from the top edge of the bag all the way around. There we are, back to the beginning. And our facing is fixed in place all the way. So that's it, your bag is finished. Take it to the ironing board and give it a lovely press. And let's have a look at it. So that's it, really super quick and easy. Now go show the love. I've included the tag as a template and the handle as a template. Um, so just go download them. Join my Facebook sewing group and show me the photos of your filled doorstep care pods or post to Instagram and tag with hashtag doorstep care pod. Feel free to share this tutorial to anyone you know who sews and as usual, please do subscribe to my channel. Now really, what are you waiting for? Go sew!